Okay, folks, and with that, we're in to game two. I'm hoping this set goes the distance, but OG's dominant Five performance makes remaining. me doubt that there will be any stopping them. I feel like the SFZ can definitely play the Gather same game back. if they just have a bit more... I'm not sure what the word is, but presence of mind to know when they need to stop and they need a bit of a better game plan. Like, we're going to run at them for eight minutes until they get their levels, and then... We're gonna farm. We're gonna let. We're gonna dodge their peak, which they should have done. Remain. They chose not to. Mm -hmm. And then if they do that, they can have a, a decent Radiant game. I mean, it's just whether they'll be able to do that. And I think Scary Face is doing the right thing, even though I really do think they played fantastically early game against the Shadow Fiend. Miracle just got out of control. I wouldn't be surprised though if they should maybe worry more about things like crit on Dazzle. I feel like remaining. crit had a number of plays, not as much early game, but later in the game he was doing so Five much sustain work remaining. and keeping people alive with those shallow graves. Yeah, I think Dyer Dazzle's a hard hero to ban though because there's multiple heroes that do similar things. Dazzle probably is one of the better ones at doing it though. But when you ban the Shadow Fiend, it means yes. you don't have to play the same way you did the first game. You don't yeah. have to worry about putting a lot of pressure on this hero because it's just not in the game. It opens up your draft a bit. A hundred percent. And Scary Face is going with the Tusk. I am pretty sure I've seen Radiant Shadow or State on this because I've casted some Scary Faces. They play in the Join Dota League, which I cost quite a bit of. And uh, yeah, they're pretty good at it. Most of these players are. But the immediate Dazzle pick up, and it's like you said, maybe Scary Faces just needs to pick the AA. Yeah, it, I don't think AA is the best with how they they played last game, unless they're looking to switch it up and try to play something different. I, I have a feeling they're. I don't want to say a one trick pony team, but that's their preferred strategy, so they might look Five to go back to it again. Remaining. Yeah. And. Oh, okay, so I was Gyro thinking this might happen. Game. Yesterday, we saw Gyrocopters picked in the first round, and we we were not having any of it. But I don't know if you saw earlier today, OG Gyro wiped team. Monkey Freedom Fighters with this hero. No, I didn't get the chance to watch that game, unfortunately. Yeah. So I think that it's something where we will see if they can utilize it to the full effect of what we would expect out of a first round Ten pick. Remaining. But I am not sure how it's going to go. Uh, just for context, folks, me and PQMZ casted a set involving Stark versus OG, Reserve. where Stark picked up the Gyrocopter first pick, uh, or second pick in, in their first pick phase, sorry. And it didn't seem to do enough work, but... Clearly, monkey business think that it's valuable, and we'll see if they can get stuff done with it. I have a feeling they're just a better team in general, so they might have a better way of dealing with the counters. Because I feel like Tusk and Slider are both really good heroes against Gyro. Yeah, it's kind of an odd conundrum, because Slider is one of those heroes where you need... As a Gyro, you want people to be up in your face, because then you rocket barrage on them, you drop the call down, they're taking a crap ton of damage right from you. Slider just sprints out of there. He doesn't care. And Tusk pops you in the snowball. You can dodge I you can dodge the cooldown, I believe. If uh not maybe both. What's the delay? Yeah. You can You can dodge. You can Gyro dodge. So back. it's easier to be a Tusk. Also he's a hero who can get up in the Gyro's face, um, either with that snowball or something, which then is another issue Gyro has. If he's trying to escape, he doesn't want you there. So like in the Tusk. Ten seconds. Yeah, and then they're both heroes that can output some physical damage as well. Tusk less so if he's just the five position support, but even if he just has brown boots and he uses walrus punch, just walrus punch on an amped damage target, it's still going to do like 200 damage or so, which is damage Jaro doesn't want to deal with. Yeah, it's really nice here if you are the Tusk, and you can't miss that walrus punch either. You, so even if the gyro eventually gets up something like a butterfly or so on, it can't miss, is my understanding. But we've got the that wire. I did not know. I'm pretty sure Walrus Punch cannot miss. I could be full of it. Let me see if it will show. Walrus Punch cannot miss. Yeah. Thank you, Green Text. It's something, because I was, yesterday we were discussing whether you can Walrus Punch the Windrunning Windrunner, and you can. Because Walrus Punch remaining. cannot miss. Either way, right, Winter Wyvern picked up here, Five and Winter Wyvern. Remaining. 
Tusk has damage which hurts her, but literally nothing Slaughter has touches a Wyvern if you use the Cold Embrace, because everything of Slaughter's is physical. And yeah, you folks won't be able to see this because we're in prison Dota mode, but this, this all of this business is physical. I, I like the Wyvern. It, it makes Vajaro a lot more viable, because now he has the two really defensive supports, and Wyvern also outputs quite a lot of damage if you go... If you snowball into the gyro with like the tusk and slada, you you're getting Radiant one of them's gonna get like heavily chunked by the what's the spell's name? Splinter Blast, and then on top of that you've got Rocket Barrage, Heal Bomb. There's a lot of stuff that can be damaged them. Yeah. But they're definitely not deviating from their strategy. They wanna run at your face. Mm-hmm. And I think it makes sense if you've got a lineup where you're comfortable with that early aggression, just own it. Night Stalker's gonna have a great night, especially if a Night Stalker Slaughter Lane or a Tusk Slaughter Lane can be really rough for your opponents. Additionally, as long as Slaughter gets 6 at a reasonable time, Night Stalker can capitalize on that as well. Yeah, and it's also really hard to play these supports where you, you kind of don't want to just be sat behind your core in the lane for the entire night's time. You want to be doing something efficient like stacking, maybe moving between lanes, but it's really hard when you're against a, one hero that can just run you down and kill you on his own, like the Night Stalker or the Slider. Yeah. Now, a Doxia pickup, fantastic here for OG. It feels like Scary Face is picking all melee heroes into a Doxia. He loves this. It's going to be easy vacuum wall combos. Yeah, and it's also a, a good hero at defending the gyro in fights. Good counter initiation, gives them an early mech fire. It's just a really solid lineup from OG. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, so for scary faces now to deal with the Doxia, I'm not sure. They've got some naturally tanky heroes, all of these being strength, although I would argue that Slaughter, just because of the items you end up building, usually four off, uh, sorry, Blink Dagger, then a four off, depending on how your farm is. You're not the tankiest. It feels like they should be decent against Gyro's early aggression, right? Just because they're naturally tankier. I don't know how you deal with this Doxia when it comes to a team fight. I don't think you do look to team fight them unless you're really far ahead. Because. Once OG get their levels, it's the same thing I said last game. They'll have a peak where they have like the Daxin mech. Maybe he's got like level 2 or 3 vacuum. Depending what their mid heroes as well. They might look to group up and push. And that's when scary faces even need to be so far ahead that they can just win the fight through higher levels and more items. Or they need to wait for them to split up, pick one or two heroes, and then take control. But with the Necro, their team fight does get a bit better. Okay, so... It's a little bit weird, but how would you feel about a silencer for the lineup of scary faces? I, f I think they already have their support, so it would have to be a mid silencer. Which. Mm. I'm not the biggest fan of it personally. I suppose it could work. I'm just wondering how they deal with the fact that they're. Their lineup has a very weak team fight. They have great pickoff t potential, right? It does feel like they would just go down in an extended team fight, just a lot of their damage being single target. And something like a silencer means maybe you can pick off those key heroes in the silence and before they get to do any damage. Gyrocopter is all magic damage early game. So if you use global, he can't do too much. But as you said, it would have to be a core silencer most likely. It gets rough. I mean, I, He's very squishy. I, yeah, I guess they could put the Night Stalker mid. Or do something weird like that. I really like it against for defensive supports, but I just don't think it's something they would go for here. It's a nice idea, honestly. If the, if they could make it work, I'd be really impressed. Yeah. Either way, we're getting into again. So this this Nature's Profit. I wanted to mention this. This one I think is Moon Meander has a ninety percent win rate on Nature's Profit. Probably something more I wanted to ask games. you about. Did he like run it earlier or something? I... Why are they just yeah. Oh, yeah, he, it's been played. I don't think it was played. I didn't actually catch both games Dino earlier today. He was on Nyx Assassin offlane earlier today, which I really like. It's something very popular in the America scene, but uh, doesn't see much play elsewhere. I feel like the Nature's Prophet, he's just known for it now. He got in those 10 games where they wiped people in the face with the Nature's remain. Prophet, and now nobody lets him have it. I feel like it's a really good moon hero, so it yeah, makes sense. I've just never Radiant seen them play it personally, so I felt the bands were just a bit weird. 
Yeah, it was a bit earlier, uh, is my understanding, and I don't think people have let them get it since, so really nice. Let's see what else. For OG, they need a no-tail hero, although he did play the gyrocopter in the last set, I believe, so they could also get a miracle hero. Could they beast master, maybe? Uh, I don't know if I like that as much here. The brewmaster Ten also seconds, doesn't remaining. feel... They could actually brewmaster here. You're betting it all on the gyro, though, with both of Five those. Seconds remaining. Yeah, I think Beastmaster's more likely if you're going to look for one of those heroes. Magnus is also an option, I guess, but I would rather see a second core here. Yeah, I, I'm gonna guess that it'll be Quaswax, and if it is, they have really good ways at stopping scary faces running at them. Yeah, and Invoker, that is, um, so whoever, someone was calling that in chat, and whoever called that, you should be proud of yourself. So, we have an invoker, you're gonna have to be my guide to all of this. Do you think it'll be, I mean, we're seeing a lot of cross wax right now, but we saw the amazing Exhort invoker, unfortunately didn't seal the deal in the game, Ten but it was a, remaining. like, 14 and 2 cross, uh, Exhort, Five um, invoda, invoker, sorry. Invoda. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I was like... I'd see wax, just because... Exhort is way too fragile, and if you get high levels in Wex, you can vacuum them into EMP, you mm. can Tornado to stop them hitting one of your teammates, so... And it doesn't I feel think... like there's the easy setup. The game that we saw, they had a Tusk, they had, I'm tr uh, it wasn't quite the Spirit Breaker, but they had another hero to set up those easy Sun Strikes for Chessie. Yeah, I... If it is Exhort, I'll be really surprised, because it, then it just has to go so well. Miracle does have 8,000 matchmaking points, is my understanding, so if anyone can pull it off... Yeah, I suppose. You can't argue with that. There's like three or four people with 8,000. I have no idea. The leaderboards have been down for weeks. There could actually be like tens of them with 8,000 matchmaking points, and we'll never know. Yeah, and a lot of people who get over 8,000 don't play on their account anymore, so they get inactive on the leaderboards because they don't want to lose it. Yeah, no, that's exactly what, guys, the moment my MMR goes up, we're not, we're just stopping. I'm gonna, I'll take a screenshot and just never show it to anyone else, you know? The whole, like, uh, you put it as your profile and you'd be like, as a caster with this much matchmaking ranking. But either way, it's the Razor Lost pickup on art style. He did very well in uh, mid last time, it felt like. Did pretty well, so we'll see. He also had a lot of help. It was a different mid lane. I don't know how easy it'll be up against the Invoker, but Invoker traditionally not a hero who wins mid matchups. No, but the Razor will definitely have a good time without any assistance. If he gets assistance, then he can probably get a few kills on the Invoker with good timings from the supports. Yeah, and we've got an early smoke up from the lineup of scary faces, but OG all grouped up here, so. Hopefully Moon doesn't get caught by this. Or, he maybe, hopefully, he does. I don't know, excitement. Either way, let's quickly introduce the players. Um, on OG, we've got Fly on that Dazzle, Wyvern being played up by Quit, Invoker by Miracle. with Quit, a Moon. Oh gosh, a really weird set, and it looks like we've got a snowball. All of them are in it. Five dudes right on top of Moon, and he is most likely dead, and that is our first blood. And yeah, that was... He's got um... search. <laughs> I love that. Oh yeah, good luck, good luck everyone. Finishing off our introductions, we're gonna have the normal bounty. <laughs> we got Moon on that dog here. Uh, we've got a really funky Invoker Cloak, is this new? It looks like a Halloween themed one on Miracle. And finally, No Tail on the Gyro. And tossing it over to you to quickly introduce Scary Faces. We have Art Style on the Razor, State 21 on the Night Stalker, RMN on the Necrophus with the First Blood, Axmo on the Offlane Slider, and Shadow on the Tusk. Now they've certainly got decent kill potential with a Tusk lineup. We've seen, I think, Fluff and Stuff in the America scene does this fantastically. He roams oh so well. Um, seems to be a really dominant force there, and he just makes stuff happen in every single lane. I wonder whether Shadow will be able to do the same. Do you think the lanes are set up for a roaming Tusk? I think they definitely can be. He, they're going to need a few levels first, especially on the task. Getting level 2 is really important. The Razor will probably need like, a few levels before they can look to kill Miracle. I don't understand, like, I understand why they might want to pressure him right here, but they're, they're just wasting a lot of time. 
right now. I think they hope to get a kill like they did last game. It might be kind of their MO. And there's the snowball coming in. Miracle, he's back and out. He won't be able to have a nice easy escape though. Only level one. Do they have enough right click? No, it doesn't look like it. And Razor, not close enough. Popping a salve as well and no mana. So as you said, not really getting too much done. And now Outstyle might take a little bit of harass. Unfortunately, with Miracle going boots, he, as soon as he gets away from the void, like they don't have any chasing power. Yeah, really nice pickup as well. Obviously, great against the Razor, so you can walk out of Static Link, but also obviously working out here with the ganks coming out. Now this bottom lane, I oh goodness, as I say that, I look away for one second, and Miracle goes down. As I want to look at bottom lane, I don't think there'll be any return kills here for Crit. Persistence pays off, I guess. Yeah. Miracle just stepped up a tiny bit too far, Crit can't really help him, and that time Razor had the nuke. On the other hand, one could argue that maybe they have sacked some of their other lanes in exchange for this. Necrophos not doing awfully, but taking a lot of harass from Mumian, they're probably gonna have to pop a you know, just walks out, pop in the salve, and at the same time the top lane Slaughter's getting nothing, although I don't think they expected Axmo to get a terribly large amount of foam. Yeah, I, I feel like Razor will win mid, regardless against an invoker maybe once he gets like level five and he starts spamming emp tornado razor has a slightly harder time but right now he'll win the lane regardless and bottom you could be completely zoning this dark soon and giving our men a really easy time but right now moon's contesting him on last hits and he's winning out despite giving first blood he's on top of the charts for cs yeah and he's doing this is what you want to prevent not the invoker I agree. It feels like Moon getting off to a great start. He's going to have gold. He's going to have levels. And it's something where if you can keep the Darkseer down, they don't have as much wombo combo. You need levels in vacuum before you get a big enough AoE that you can really set stuff up with the Invoker with the cooldown. And so not being down there. But looks like now they are rotating maybe for Moon. R, M, N, thinking about that positioning. And Moon, he is being wrapped on. They get the heal bomb on him, and this should be a snowball. Do they even need it? They go for the snowball, trying to make sure they stun him out. And uh, yeah, auto attacks will do it. Don't even need the ice shards. At the same time, on top lane, Slaughter took quite a bit of damage. And Fly and No Tail just gonna bring the creep wave with them. Oh, they might actually think about going back on Axmo, using that flat cannon to really hurt him. But he's got one charges, luckily. Uh, okay, so something I didn't notice. Top top OG haven't placed a single ward yet. Both of them are still... Get... Maybe one got dewarded and they bought a new one, but they're both on the supports right now. No, they didn't place. We're three minutes in. Because the mid didn't... Sentry didn't deward anything. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think they got dewarded either, but... How do you... This is a big problem. Top tower is under How do you feel about that? Do you think they're doing it because they don't think they need it? Well, when Crit was sitting mid, they didn't really need a hill ward. And I guess Fly didn't think he needed a ward to block the ball or any vision at the side. But, actually no, okay, never mind. They did place one. I I'm retarded. There is one bottom, but I feel like they need a ward like somewhere around this area so they can see the rotations. And that way Moon would know when to back off. Miracle would know when to back off. It's a bit harder at night time. Like, you might have to place it bang in the river so you actually get vision of the rune for when darkness comes off. But that is quite far away. Yeah, they're actually okay. going for the st slows on mid, but the cold snap, that's about all that we're going to have coming out. And now a snowball onto no tail, immediate TP rotation, but there's three of them! Rocket Barrage is just going to be tanked by all of them, Shallow Grave comes out, State 21 thinking about staying. How long in his void? He could just stay and use the void in a few seconds, all the ice shots. They managed to kill off no tail, and will there be more? Fly has no mana for a big heal bomb, he'll catch out Shadow, and it looks like crit. No, he's not doing enough damage, it's night time. This guy's just going to walk on by him, Arctic Bone comes out too little too late, and I don't think crit has the kills. I didn't catch if Arctic Bone was on cooldown there. I think he went for the body block because if you get in this choke point, you can't actually run around. So that, I think that's why he was waiting to use his spells. Yeah, it feels very ambitious to attempt to choke point a nighttime Night Stalker. It's actually really easy. I guess he just messed it up. Or maybe his hero's hitbox isn't as big as some of the others he plays. I don't know if that's still a thing. Hitboxes definitely are still being problematic. That is still a thing. And RMN still having a rough time against Moon Meander. While other people might be having trouble, Moon Meander, top of the net worth chart for his team, doing really well. Already level 7, so starting to put points into Dyer's vacuum. I wouldn't be surprised to see an early attack. wall either. Structures are yeah, maybe like 
level 9 or so, or if he just happens to skill up when a team fight's happening, I think he'll take a wall then. But the vacuum's definitely not bad right now. It gives them a way of like getting people away from you people that they're hitting. And they've landed that the ice shards on bottom onto Moomian. He does vacuum them back. He's trying to out damage them, but the Reaper Scythe comes down and Moomian are wiped off of the map for 60 seconds. At the same time, they've taken top tower and Slaughter maybe doesn't want to be here. The Courier also spotted by Fly. Not quite sure on that one. On. Yeah. Still here the spots are rotating. I don't think they can get in close enough. The cold snap already used. We could hear it there, and he's got supports now coming in. Maybe they can bait this, though. Maybe Miracle coming in, but I'm pretty sure they just saw Fly, and that's an invis on State 21. He's thinking about going in. Where is Alt Styles backup? Shallow Grave immediately out of Fly. Where is the cold embrace or anything? It's not skilled yet. Snowball onto Fly. He's going to go down, or is he? Okay. EMP Tornado. He finally falls in here. Comes No Tail with the backup. But if Shadow gets away, might be okay. So. Yeah, that was a really nice rotation from Notel and really well timed EMP tornado from Miracle hitting all yeah. three after the snowball. Unfortunately, not saving Crit's life, but I still think a good turnaround kill. Unfortunately for them, Moon Mihand is still dead just because of that Reaper Scythe. Yeah, that, that is so frustrating. It's like double your death time at this stage of the game and yeah. maybe triple for supports. Suddenly, something Dyer's where Moon Mihand are being really attack. punished. He was. A bit ahead, um, and now he's right back at kind of same level. But they're thinking about going in on here. They've got the surge up from No Tail, but I think they've given away the gank, and nothing gonna latch, including the fact that there are more people coming in bottom. I don't know if Moon Meander without the wall can actually fight into three. Now they have cooldown, it's a bit more doable for them. Yeah. The Jarrah does a lot of damage at this point. But if you stack multiple heroes on him, he doesn't care that much. And... Dazzle in the woods is getting found by the Night Stalker. He yeah. probably can crave. Let's see, he's got some TP rotations. Not quite on the right side, but Arctic Bone gonna do enough work. And now it's daytime. State 21 not really able to contest that. Where is the backup? It looks like OG coming down the river, seeing what they can get here. They're gonna run into two others, though, and suddenly a call down onto Odd Style. But dodging it with a Snowball. State 21 taking quite a bit of damage. Snowball comes out, and that is a dead Night Stalker. And now Shadow, not in the right part of town. It looks like Odd Style's gonna fall as well. You can take No-Tail's damage, but you don't take his magic damage. But the Reaper Scythe, not enough to kill him off. They might be able to get No-Tail here with the a million 168 stolen damage and Moon Meander taking too much as well! Cold Embrace saving him from this EMP. One more auto attack will do it. Do they catch the tornado on the Necropose? They do! RMN looking like one more auto attack will do it and he goes down. Miracle showing he is very comfortable with this hero. That is the second time he has come in with an EMP with a tornado that saved his teammates. Uh, I mean, you can't question 8,000 and Max That's making true. points. Of course he's gonna hit the tornado. <laughs> I was really impressed that he managed to catch the escaping Radiance Necrophos as well, not just going attack. for the Razor, understanding that with the EMP, with the auto attacks, they had that. And OG now pulling themselves a little bit ahead in this game. We've got actually pretty low lost hits across the board just because everyone's being so mobile. But Slaughter getting closer and closer to his blink, and I wonder Necrophos going for a rod of Atos, it looks like. Pretty standard on that hero these days. Yeah, the face boots, and, uh, I think a big preference due to uh, from player to player sorry but atus is I, I would say the most standard item on that hero which is really odd to say that atus is standard on anyone yeah i um, love the item but cheapest way to get in necrophos desperately needs that here Wondering exactly how you can use it to its full utility. You know, there's no ember here. It's not so easy, but they're catching on alt style. Cooldown gonna hit at least once. Doesn't manage to get the second one, and they're saving him in the snowball, but rolling him into certain death. And no tail there, mopping them up. Dogs here actually gets one of the kills, but that was a really nice play. I also liked how no tail just kind of backed into his team a little bit more there, making sure that the snowball came their way. You know, and scary faces attempted save not working out at all of the for them. Yeah, this ward scouting it all out as well, so they knew exactly where they needed to converge to get the kills. Yeah, really well done there. Now let's talk itemization for Invoker. He looks like he's going drums. Always a good item, good stats, gonna speed you up. We've also seen Yules and Orchids on Invoker. Yeah, I, I like the drums just to tank up a bit, and also he hits really hard at this point of the game, so the attack speed's not irrelevant. I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of mobility like a force or a blink if they find the necro in the woods. 
Yeah, let's see what they can do. That looks like Necro taking quite a bit of damage, and RMM is gonna fall to fly. Actually gets the lost hits. Can they make something happen on this bottom area too, though? Wyvern is their crit. He's only level 5 still. I think if he had Winter's Curse, he could hold them up. But they're snowballing again into too many heroes. Miracle, he's low on mana, but I think he's got more than enough to do some work here. Crit saved from all that physical damage, but now gonna be walked, not like a dog, like a wyvern. And there's the cooldown, no tail coming in at the same time, doing lots of rocket barraging, and you just wanna sprint all the way away, Axmo. So it looks like they've saved their teammates. Miracle actually caught on a little bit of the wrong side of town. Alt style doing good work on him and the stun. Slithering crush, no! The tornado Sorry, comes up first, and the EMP gonna back them all the way off, and Miracle is still thinking about looking for more, but it is suddenly nighttime, and they need to get out. Five seconds silence on that crippling fear. The ice shields push them out. It's not enough. If that ice shot has been a little bit closer, maybe they can catch out Fly here. But this whole snap comes in, and no tail. He's ready, but a Reaper Scythe gonna take him out of the game for 65 seconds, and they have overstayed their welcome on the lineup of OG. I think forgetting that RNM is the hero who wipes you off the map. Yeah, I don't think that was too bad considering they lost one hero, and all that time Mo Moon had space bottom, so he's gonna have his mech now on top of his arcanes, which is a really early timing to have them both. So, I'm, I'm actually surprised how close these fights are going, despite Scary Face's heroes being like really good at the small scaling, small scale engagements. Yeah, they're doing a really good job taking advantage of these night times and everything. And that was also perfectly popped timing on the alt from Night Stalker. Really nice there. So gonna have a nice extra long night. Now, if you're this Night Stalker, he's buying up smokes. It's a good way for his team to try to work their way back into the game. So we've seen a lot of Night Stalkers try to go for the Midas since you don't really have another farming tool. I like the Midas, but at the moment, he's so far away from it, I'd expect him to opt to tank up a bit. But the one thing I really dislike seeing is when you don't skill your W on the Night Stalker, opting for a tiny bit more move speed and attack speed. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I just naturally assumed he had it. It's something where you really need, especially against these heroes, crippling fear on a dazzle during the night. You, it's a five-second silence. The dazzle's dead. Same with the invoker, or even no tail yeah, exactly. here. Uh, I, I cannot understand it. I would skill it over your ulti every day, personally. It's your best spell. Yeah, a little. At nighttime. A little bit surprising, but perhaps State 21 on that Night Stalker has a different plan than the rest of us. It looks like Scary Faces will have to give up two towers here to OG. I think this is the right decision. They really can't fight into this, especially since Moon Meander now has his ult up. But they're trying. They're like moving heroes here when the tower's nearly low instead of trying to get space out the map. I think maybe they're just trying to. Trading quite oh fair. no, it's because they have the blink dagger just up, but you can't use that slaughter if you're poison touch. And he's taking so much damage, a cooldown gonna drop on his head as well, and slaughter's out. It looks like RMN is gonna fall as well, and as you said, they should not have tried to take that engagement, and now Arctic burning up the catapult. Mmm, can take magic damage. You have to expect there's wards on one or two of these spots when they're sieging towers like this. You can't just run in from the side when you're not smoked and hope that a team like OG isn't gonna have vision of you. Yeah. And they might be Actually coming in for in. more. They don't have the Arctic Phone, but the Winter's Curse set up. They have more than enough damage to pick one. Can they get two? Night Stalker's trying to do something to the Wyvern, but instead EMP to the face. And now Night Stalker, he actually gets dodged to the EMP because of the tornado, but they just run him down. All while Moomian is just casually split pushing. He's not even there, not even using his mech. And OG take another dominant team fight. We're now 16 to 8. And they're smoked up. They're playing this so well, but... I kind of feel Scary Face is just giving it to them on a platter at this point, which is, which is sad. I feel like they could be playing this so much better. They they just have a, a a lack of knowing how the game's played at a professional level. I want to say, RMN's actually getting picked yeah, up. Yeah, RNM is very dead. And now Night Stalker who came in to help out. State 21 is going to go down as well. Splinter Blast being what finishes him off. This is just falling apart at the seams. It's the classic one by one and as you said it feels like OG just have a much better idea of what their heroes need to be doing right now. Their fight potential and they are capitalizing on it. Yeah, And this is at the point where Dux is close to his blink. 15 minutes in only 400 gold away. Okay, he actually bought something, so I'm guessing he finished the griefs instead of going for the blink, which is fine as well. Getting rid of the silence that eventually is going to come out, getting rid of just any kind of debuffs is always good. 
At the same time, Scary Face is about to be all out of towers, and now you don't have towers, you can sacrifice a tornado that doesn't hit, but neither does the Slytherin Crush! And suddenly Shadow doesn't want to be here. Does he have a snowball to buy him some time? The rest of his team's thinking about coming back in on this. The MP is gonna hit, there's a wall down! They can't come up here and follow, and Shadow is dead. RMN is thinking about going up there. Guardian Greaves go out, and they're just gonna chase on through Miracle. He might be amp damaged, but he has no fear. A nice Splinter Blast bringing them low as well, and I think the days of getting off beautiful Reaper Sights are done. And the Winter's Curse Axmo Axe is just gonna fall. Here comes Old Style throwing out some casual plasma fields, and it's not gonna be nearly enough for the lineup of OG. Is there any way other than maybe OG making mistakes that Scary Faces can get back in uh, into this game? I feel like a fight around Roche is our only point of contention right now. Towers, it, it's too Dyer's risky to even be close. They, they should just be in other lanes pushing them out, giving this up. Oh, we have but another tornado. They... EMP, Shadow is going to pop himself into the snowball. Not dead yet, but he's rolling into them. State 21 thinking about coming in as well. Someone needs to be leashed here by Old Style, but Shadow just goes down. And that is a monster kill for Miracle. This guy, he is 8 and 1. Yeah, despite that one death, like... The... Camping in middle for the first two levels, or well, it wasn't two levels, it was two minutes, did absolutely nothing this game. And you can see why. Like, sure, he didn't get the CS, but he's been active in fights, he's got his levels. I, I, it's just really hard for me to understand why SFC are doing these things. Yeah, I think just not, maybe a bit desperate, maybe really just wanting a couple kills before they GG out, who knows. Four of the top networks, oh, Slaughter goes in and uses the sprint into the face of No-Tail. He's just gonna burst you down. Now, can they get the rocket, uh, the cooldown to latch on anyone? Alt style, Yule's up just in case they couldn't catch him and that EMP is gonna latch. Suddenly, no mana and he's pulled through the wall. Alt style is dead. On the back lines, folks are trying to come in. Shadow is there, but again, another snowball that's not so great and they're gonna get themselves out of this game with the GG. Shadow probably gonna fall before the throne explodes. And that was it, two dominant performances by OG. Uh, they played that really cleanly. As soon as SFC gave them something, they took it and ran a mile with it. Yeah. Unfortunately, one or two mistakes from a lower tier team just put them way too far behind. Yeah. Well, OG get themselves another win in the group stages for Star Ladder. They're doing really well. And Scary Face is unfortunately not, not sitting at any of those wins. Either way, this will be it for our coverage today of Stall Out of Europe. We hope to see you next time. BTS is now back in the house. So I don't think we'll be the ones on that. But either way, it's been Stall Ladder with Llama Down Under and PQMZ. We'd love your feedback on how to make the calls more enjoyable. So please leave that at Llama Down Under, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. We hope to hear from you. PQMZ does not social media, so you can give me your feedback for him as well. And we will see you next time. Do you have any final shout-outs before we are done for the day, PQ? Shout-out to BTS for letting us cast this stuff. Yeah. Always nice of them to go to Nanyang and free up some spots. So thank you again, and we hope to see you next time, guys. We'll have some final words from the sponsors, and then we'll leave up the splash screen. And I think Stall Out is America. Oh, sorry. I think the Summit America is about to start. So you guys can all go check that out and see which team is going to qualify for the Summit. Peace out, guys.